please turn to page 270, 270 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in Christ. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts, whereby you have given us light and immortality, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. And Jesus and his disciples had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them. He will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. Very large crowds spread their cloaks on the road, and others got branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The Lord of the crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ.
sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, take upon him our nature, to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering, and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading.
passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What will you give me if I betray Jesus to you? The priest paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that moment, Judas began to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? Jesus said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will, be, will betray me. And the disciples became greatly distressed, and began to say to him and one another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, the one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to the one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out from the many for the forgiveness of sins. To you, I will never drink again. I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to his disciples, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee, and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, Jesus threw himself on the ground and prayed, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, So, could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, Jesus went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, Jesus came and found the disciples sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, 
the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of the sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him, a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priest and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given the crowd a sign, saying, One I will kiss is the man, arrest him. And once Judas came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And kissed him, Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then the crowd came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, have you, come unto, have you come with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scripture of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted Jesus and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Cyphus, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside. Peter sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priest and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. But they found none. Though many false witnesses came forward, at the last two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the, pre the high priest said to Jesus, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? The scribes and the elders answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in Jesus' face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is that that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus, the Galilean. But Peter denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you're talking about. When Peter went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, Peter denied it with an oath. I do not know this man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then Peter became, began to curse, and he swore an oath. I don't know the man. At that moment, the cop crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cop crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. 
When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented, repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest and the elders. Judas said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But the chief priest and the elders said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, Jesus, Judas departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And he took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom the price had been set, of whom some of the people of Israel had set price, and they gave them to the potter's field as the Lord commanded. Now, now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, you say so. But when Jesus was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they have made against you? But Jesus gave him no answer, not even to a simple charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival of governor was, excuse me, the governor was a Custom to release the prisoner from the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Babar, Babarus. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to the crowd, Who do you want me to release to you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For Pilate realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests and the elders had handed Jesus over. While Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, I have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barbarus and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, <laughs> Which of the two do you want me to release to you? And the crowd said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then Pilate asked, Why? What evil has he done? But the crowd shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the peoples, as a whole, answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So Pilate released Barbarus for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed them over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters. And they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped Jesus and put a sacred robe on him, a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on Jesus and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him to be cruci to crucify him. As they went out, the soldiers came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry Jesus' cross. They offered Jesus wine to drink, mixed with gal. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. And then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over Jesus' head 
they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with Jesus, one on his right, one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from that cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes, elders, were mocking Jesus, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted God. Let God deliver him now. If God wants to, for this man said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with Jesus also taunted him in the same way from noon on. Darkness came over the whole land until there in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lima sabachthani. That is, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn into two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tomb also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there, looking on a form from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea, and Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. Joseph went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. Joseph then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priest and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. He said, after three days, I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, Jesus' disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people that he's been risen from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. God, may the words of my lips and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. In these gospel readings which we have for today, there are obvious contrasts that we find in them. 
In the first reading, the reading about the entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem, what we have is Jesus riding in on the donkey, which is a sign of peace as David had done years and years ago. You also have, though, and it's not in this gospel reading, but you also have Pilate coming in. Because the only time that he actually lived in Jerusalem was at the time of the various great feast days for the Jews. And so he came in on the western gate, and he came in riding on a stallion with his armors on and with all his soldiers behind him. And Jesus came in on the eastern gate and came in riding on the donkey. It's a sign of peace and a sign of war. You also have in the gospel reading of the Passion by Matthew many contrasts. You have, first of all, the obvious contrast between the chief priests and Jesus. And Jesus is silent versus the way in which the chief priests and the scribes and the Pharisees accuse him and ultimately want him condemned to death. You also have Pilate, who again gives in to the crowd fearing a riot, rather than holding to what he knows is true, that this man is innocent. And then you have Peter and Judas contrast again because both men, along with the other disciples who desert him, deny him. In Peter's case, you would think of the two men, he would be the one who would commit suicide. Because he was one of the four original disciples of Jesus. He was also one of those three select disciples along with John and James, who had been taken up for the transfiguration, who had been told by Jesus that upon this rock, my church will be built. And yet he trusted Jesus. He trusted Jesus to forgive him, even though he had betrayed him three times. In Judas's case, he was probably the one outsider among the 12 disciples. All the rest of the disciples had come from the northern kingdom, and Judas had come from the southern kingdom. Judas, though, was the one who despaired. Judas was the one who did not trust Jesus to forgive him, to love him unconditionally, as he does all of us. And so Judas, tragically, goes out and hangs himself. We also have, as I mentioned earlier, all the disciples, all the men deserting Jesus. The ones who were quietly standing at the crucifixion were women. There were the women who followed Joseph as he carried the body to the tomb that he had just built and laid the body of Jesus in the tomb. And there they waited, and as we know, they will be the first in the tomb to discover that Jesus has risen from the dead. And all of this, I think we can find ourselves, both as those who deny, both of those who desert, but also those who faithfully trust in Jesus and his ability to forgive us and his ability to love us unconditionally. And you and I, as disciples of Christ, are called to do the same thing. To forgive all. To do, as a reading that I saw reflected on these passages this morning as I prayed, that there are no longer any enemies, that all of us are sons and daughters of Christ, Sons and daughters of Jesus, we are called to be one, to be those who love unconditionally. Please rise.
you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets and their courses, and this fragile Earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. In the primal elements, you brought forth the human race, blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rooters of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust when we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. To prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. In the fullness of time, you sent your Holy Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, open for us a way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. Therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope. Proclaim with them your glory and their unending hymn. Sacrifice for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. 
gifts of God for the people of God. Let's take them in remembrance of Christ died for us and let us be on him in faith with hope.
between page 365 and the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us proceed to the uh, Church of Flower Garden. 